God bless you guys. Welcome back to the gift series. This unfortunately is the last part of the gift series. We've been looking at the Holy Ghost for the past uh, three weeks, um, the entire month of February, and this is the last installment. But we are looking at something that is quite important, and I think it definitely resonates with the young people. And that is finding out what your gift is and understanding your gift. Um, but before we go any further, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to share your word. We pray that you'll edify us, that you'll empower us, that you will give us understanding and wisdom for this particular topic. We pray that you will bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, let's give honour also to our presiding bishop, my pastor, Bishop Dexter Edmund, to the National Ecclesiastical Council and to our national youth president, Sister Charlene Wright. We give honour to who honour is due. So let's crack on with what we've got this week. Quick recap of what we went over with Sister Renee Landell in week three of our presentation. So she dealt with the outflowing and indwelling of the Holy Spirit and she made reference to Acts chapter 1 verse 8 and St. John chapter 7 verse 38. She also mentioned about yielding to the spirit and dying daily to the flesh and gave us practical ways in which we could do that, which was things like humbly and expressively praying, obeying God's will, sending up praise and worship and serving and loving God as well as others. She also spoke about quenching the spirit and whether we can actually lose the Holy Spirit. So we understood from her teaching last week that believers can deactivate the spirit and that God will not dwell in unclean vessels. We also understood and learned about the way that believers can reactivate the, the Holy Spirit um, and the power of the Holy Spirit through repentance. We're going to look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We'll look at the function of the gifts. And we're going to look at personally what is or are my gift or gifts. So let's deal with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So according to Acts chapter 2 verse 38, we know that it says, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So that gift there is referring to the initial gift of speaking in tongues. But there are various types of gift and they fall into three categories. You have manifestation gifts. These gifts demonstrate the power of God. You have functional gifts, which are gifts that serve others. And then you have vocational or ministry gifts, which are leadership gifts. So let's deal with 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So it deals with nine gifts of the spirit. So it deals with the word of wisdom, which is the ability to give wise words and counsel, discerning the time and the need for the word, okay? So these individuals that have this gift are able to give sound advice, are able to give sound um, answers and resolutions to issues. And they also understand how to speak at the right time in the right manner. Um, and they always have the right word for that particular moment. The word of knowledge. This is the ability to relay the word of God and have a deep revelation into the word so that can be presented to the hearer. But this pro uh, this can also be referred to in prophecy as well. So I'll explain to you what that means when we get to that particular gift. So then we have the gift of faith, the ability to believe in a greater capacity. Now, according to the scriptures, we have all been given a measure of faith. However, there are some individuals that God has blessed with the gift of faith that allow them to believe in a greater capacity. The gift of healing. Now, when we talk about healing, oftentimes we talk about or think about the laying on of hands. Now, that is definitely the case. People are healed by the laying of hands. Um, but when we're talking about healing holistically, we have to understand that this particular gift ministers to people both spirit spiritually, physically and mentally. 
okay so it's not just a a physical thing where you lay hands on a person who is blind and they receive their sight but it may be potentially that an individual is able to be ministered to spiritually and that brings them back um sometimes people have mental issues that god would use the gift of healing um in order to soothe that person's mind okay the working of miracles and i've given an example here the ability to lay hands on the sick and see them recover so we know that when jesus was here walking on earth jesus performed miracles and walked in such power that he was able to lay hands on those who were blind and they received their sight those who were deaf and they were able to hear those who were dead and they were able to be raised so the working of miracles is a gift that god has given to the church um for the edification of the church in the, in the sense of the power of the manifestation of god's power being able to be visibly seen prophecy which is the ability to be able to hear what thus saith the lord for individuals and for the church now when it comes to a word of knowledge in cohesion with prophecy sometimes god will give the word of knowledge um, in the sense of um, giving insight into a specific individual's personal situation that's currently going on or maybe God will identify something that's going on in their life that nobody would know about in this current situation and the word of knowledge is there to uh, reveal to that individual that God knows exactly what's going on and God knows that they, uh, they are suffering or God knows that they're going through um, and that he's there for them. So a lot of the time, word of knowledge, yes, it can come through the word of God, but it can also come through God revealing to the individual who has that gift that there is an individual with a problem. Um, and sometimes that can come across in a prophetic way. The deserting of spirits. So this is being able to detect and pick up spirits. So a lot of the time when you were growing up in church, you probably see that the mothers would probably, you know, get up and they would probably take an individual to the altar or they'll take somebody and pray for them or so. And sometimes it was because they picked up a spirit that they did not agree with. OK, now. The Bible teaches us that we must try the spirit because there are many false prophets that have gone out into the world. So the, the ability to be able to discern is ability to be able to identify whether that's godly or whether it's ungodly. So we have diverse kind of tongues. Now this one is really interesting because it gives the individual the ability to speak as a spirit gives utterance in a particular different language now on the day of pentecost the bible says that when they spoke in tongues um they were they were they were amazed because they were saying how is it that we can understand what these individuals are saying they're actually speaking in tongues and they, they they are speaking the wonderful works of god and that's what these particular this particular gift will do it will allow an individual to speak the wondrous works of god or to give across a message in a language that maybe you and i would never understand um, and that's the beauty of God and that's the beauty of the working of the Holy Spirit is that God is not just for English speaking individuals. God will work through whoever he should, whoever he will choose um, and God will speak to anybody he will choose to speak to. Um, and this is one of the reasons why this gift is such an important gift, because this is allowing us to be able to go out into the highways and byways and to bid people to come um, and, and to, to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. But then you have also the interpretation of tongues. So this is the ability to hear the word of the Lord through the speaking of tongues and to be able to interpret that into an individual's native language. So for us who speak English, we do not understand any other native language. We don't under, uh, understand anybody else's language apart from English, unless you've been taught to understand that or you've been born and raised in that particular area and you know how to speak the language of that particular area or that country. However, with the interpretation of tongues, this gift is able to break down what, what is being said in tongues so that it can then be translated into the native tongue of, of English or French or whatever it is that you're, wherever you're from, so that you can understand exactly what God is trying to say because there is a message behind what that is, what, what's being sp spoken in tongues so there's a message behind that so when god wants to interpret um god will raise up an individual with the gift of interpretation to be able to say this is what the lord is saying this is what the lord has said through this individual okay
birthday, I just want to say that there are a few other gifts that you could potentially have. Um, so you have things like the helps, gift of helps. You have the gift of leadership. You have the gift of mercy. You have the gift of evangelism. You have the gift of giving. So these gifts are all available to believers also, even though they may not necessarily be mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Function of the gifts. So the gifts of the Holy Spirit have been given to the church for the edification of the body of Christ. So when I looked up the word edification, it gave me this definition. The moral or intellectual instruction or improvement of someone. So in context to what we're saying here, what we're saying is that the Holy Spirit has given these gifts to the church for the improvement of the church. So the church should always become more mature. The church should become more spiritually engaged. The church should always have an understanding that the Holy Spirit is moving, that the Lord wants to speak to his church. And he will use these gifts as ways and means to have conversation and communicate with his church. So these gifts are to empower believers. So we've got a scripture there, 1 Peter 4 verse 10. So believers are to be empowered when these gifts are actually in function. All gifts are to operate under, and I need to stress this, under the direction and leading of the Holy Spirit. All gifts. Now, I've oftentimes heard it in reference to speaking in tongues. I've oftentimes heard it said that people can just speak in tongues like that. Well, the scripture actually states, you speak as the spirit gives utterance. And because the speak, because speaking in tongues is not a learned language, how can you count to three and then speak in tongues? That doesn't make any sense. So oftentimes when I hear people say, after three, we let's speak in our spiritual language. That means it clearly has to be rehearsed. Because when the day of Pentecost came and the Holy Ghost descended upon them, they didn't have time to rehearse what they were going to say. So to me, you cannot stand there and speak in tongues unless the Holy Ghost moves upon you. In the same way that these gifts operate, you cannot just prophesy and you not be moved by the Holy Spirit to prophesy. We have to be extremely careful that we don't just get caught up in moments of wanting to be uh, uh, seen and wanting to be at the forefront and because we have the ability to speak, speak in tongues or we have the ability to um to prophesy or god has given us a gift of being able to lay hands on the sick that does not give you a qualified right to then stand up and start doing as you will you are under the direction and leading of the holy ghost and only under that so when the holy spirit tells you to move that's when you move okay these gifts are to work in cohesion with each other and are of the same spirit now oftentimes when you look back in first corinthians um for a lot of the gifts it would say um after it has mentioned what the gift is it will say are, are of the same spirit or after the same spirit so it identifies that these gifts are to work together because they came from the exact same place so this means that there should never be any contention between the gifts there should never be any kind of priority over any of the gifts now one of the reasons why i say that is because just because you can prophesy and all i can do is is speak in tongues or have diverse types of types of tongues you think that you are better than me not so not so as a matter of fact if we continue to read in that same chapter of first corinthians it actually tells us that these gifts are almost like how our body works i'm actually going to read it so it says for as the body is one and hath many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body so also is christ for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been made to drink into one spirit. Okay? For the body is not one member, but many members. Okay? I'll say that again. So the body is not one member, but many. For if the foot shall say... Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. It is therefore, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, 
I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body, now watch this, this is the beauty of it, verse 17. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? So if all of us had the gift of prophecy, where is the word of knowledge? If all of us had the word of knowledge, where is the gift of healing? So the beauty of the body of Christ is that the body of Christ has been given various gifts and various operations of those gifts. But if we all were craving and wanted to be the one gift and the one operation of that gift, then the body would be stifled. Could you imagine? You're supposed to know what a body looks like. You know that you've got two eyes, you've got two ears, you've got a nose, you've got a mouth, you've got hair, you've got... Oh, some of us have got hair. Um, <laughs> you've, got, you've got hair, you've got two arms, you've got two legs, and you've got a body, you've got five, ten fingers... Well, if you want to be really political, you've got eight fingers, two thumbs, um, you've got ten toes. But could you imagine if this whole body that you see was just an eye? Where's the hearing? Where's the ears? Where's the, where's the mouth? Where's the nose? Where's the, the arms? Where's the hands? If that's what the scripture is actually saying here, in, in all essence, is that in order for a body to be a body, there has to be m multiple members. However, they all make up the one body. Now, we are of the one body, which is the body of Christ, but we don't all serve the same purpose. Now, if we did serve the same purpose, then that would mean that there would be no edification for the body. Because that would mean if we all serve the same purpose of prophesying, then nobody would receive a word of wisdom. Nobody would receive a word of knowledge. Nobody would be receiving healing. Nobody would receive, uh, nobody would see the working of miracles. But that is the beauty of the body of Christ, that we have all been given these individual gifts. And the beauty of these gifts is that this, this is the, this is the key point, that these gifts work together in order to make the body stronger. That's what I want you to understand, that your gift is to make the body stronger. You are not just one little part of the body. As a matter of fact, the beauty of the body, the, the intricacy of the body is that these hands that move, they don't just move by themselves. In each of my fingers are little muscles that have to move and contract in order for me to be able to move my fingers this way. So even though the fingers are on show, there are some muscles that are underneath this skin and flesh and bone that you don't see that are working in the background in order to allow me to even do this. So what I'm saying is we cannot push or put anybody else down because of the fact that they might not necessarily be in the forefront. You might not be in the pulpit. You might not be on the praise and worship team. You might not be on the, the, the instruments. You might not be in, in the prayer, prayer team. You may not be an usher, but there are things that you can do behind the scenes that you allow the body of Christ to grow. You allow the body of Christ to be fruitful. You allow the body of Christ to be matured. You allow the body of Christ to go further because of your work in the background. You don't have to be the fingers on show and the beauty of it you should be able to be happy to be the muscles behind the scenes deeper in a deeper way this is an engine and if you look into this engine I've, I've, I've labeled as much as i possibly can various parts of the engine You've got the valve cover, you've got the valves, you've got the pistons, you've got the distributor, you've got the downpipe, you've got the turbocharger, you've got the wastegate um, actu actuator, you've got the charge pipe, you've got the intercooler, you've got the intake pipe, you've got the intake manifold, you've got the fuel rail, you've got the cylinder head, you've got the fuel pressure regulator, but it's one engine. And the beauty of this is this, look at this. That this one engine with so many parts has to be a part of a functioning car. So even though we have multiple parts to this engine, this engine only makes up part of a larger car. So the beauty of it is, if I take away the cylinder head, this engine cannot function the way it's supposed to function because it needs the cylinder head. Just as much as it needs the valve cover, just as much as it needs the intake pipe, just as much as it needs the turbocharger. 
So as soon as one of those parts of one, one of those functions is taken away, it makes the engine weaker, which then in turn makes the car unfunctional or not, not functioning. So in reality, the beauty of it is that even as small as your potential gift may be or how you, or insignificant you think your gift is, without your gift, you can potentially be stopping the functionality of the full working car. Continue with this talk here because I want you to understand that the church will flourish when the gifts are in operation and when there is unity amongst the brethren. Now, what am I saying? Because you have a personal vendetta or personal ought against that brother or sister, you refuse to allow their gift to be received. So because you don't like them, when the Lord will use them to prophesy, you refuse it. When the Lord will use them to bring healing, you refuse it. When there is unity amongst the brethren, the gifts can operate in a way that the church is blessed. Your gift is not better than anybody else's. So just because you have the gift of prophecy... And to be honest with you, in today's society, it seems as though everybody's running and looking for prophecy. So because you have the gift of prophecy, you think that you stand head and shoulders above somebody else who might have the gift of wisdom or have the gift of healing or have the gift of the word of knowledge. Your gift is not better than anybody else's. All gifts are essential to the body of Christ. Every gift, just as I showed you on the previous slide, that engine that if one gift is not functioning then you can become you have a dysfunctional engine you have a dysfunctional car all gifts are essential and they are needed in the body of Christ god will use these gifts as a way to communicate to alert and to send warning to his people so if you're at this place where you won't receive that word because you don't like that sister, you can miss the word that God has for you. You can miss the alert. You can miss the warning. And as a result of that, you end up in problems. So rather than sitting there with an issue and an ought against the individual, clear the Bible says, clear your heart of anything that you have. Before you even come and worship, clear your heart. And the beauty of it is that when God, this is how much God loves us, is that God will send warnings and it is down to us to, to hear and to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. But if, you're, if you have a personal issue with somebody that God has gifted with the ability to do something and you miss your moment, that is nobody's fault but yours. Nobody's fault but yours. No gift should contradict each other. So if the word of prophecy has gone forth, the word of wisdom should not contradict that. God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. Let's deal with this question, a question that we've probably asked ourselves. I know that I've definitely asked myself on many occasions. Um, and that is, what is or are my gift or gifts um, what is my gift? What is what are my gifts? So I want to make a very clear point that there is a difference, a distinct difference between a talent and a gift. Because your talent moves people. But in this case, the gift moves the presence and the power of God. Okay? I'll give you an example. A singer. When a singer goes up to sing a song, that individual is talented. They can sing. They have the ability to sing. But what makes that gift or what makes that song so effective is the power of the Holy Ghost coupled with that talent. So the beauty of it is that that individual can sing. Yes, that's wonderful. But when it is coupled with the Holy Ghost, that then releases gifts through that song what do i mean while that individual is singing under the anointing and under the power of the holy ghost the gift of healing is taking place the gift of prophecy is taking place 
um, the gift of uh, the word of wisdom is taking place, the word of knowledge is taking place. Um, and to be honest with you, what you don't even realize is that sometimes you can be in that moment and not even realize that your gifts are being exhibited because you're so under the flow and under the, the, the unction of the Holy Spirit. I can remember um, and at, at a time where I was playing at a, a conference and you know a, a lady was singing and she was an exceptional singer and she stood up at the front and you could tell that the Holy Spirit was starting to work through her and she stopped singing what she was singing and she actually went down from the platform and went to a lady that was sitting, sitting about midway of the congregation and she took the lady's hand and she began to sing it as well now nobody knew why she did that that wasn't even part of the set nobody knew why she did that nobody knew what was going on so we just had to flow with her at that particular moment it actually came out later on in that evening that that woman was going through so many different issues um, and she had had so many different diagnoses and so that moment there the ministry of the Holy Spirit through that song was able to bring healing, was able to bring that, that, that word of comfort, word of wisdom, word of knowledge um, to that individual so that that individual could actually see that God was actually moving through that moment. So I want you to understand is that while you may be talented, coupling it with the Holy Ghost is always going to be beneficial because then you start to see the gifts manifest. Then you start to see the gifts in operation. Then you start to see the gifts manifesting so that people are blessed. And the, the, when the people are blessed, God is glorified. Okay. So I want you to understand your gift is unique. It may not always operate under the same in the same way as others, but it will always be under the same influence. And that is the Holy Spirit. So, for example, with that example there of that lady singing that song, she was able to move in that gift of healing without actually having to lay hands on the individual and say, be healed in Jesus name. So the beauty of it is that your gift may not necessarily operate in the, co the, the, the kosher way, um, the way that everything is normal. Um, sometimes in, in some cases, sometimes your gifting is not for the assembly that you're in. Sometimes the gift that you have is actually used outside of the four walls of your assembly. And the reason why I don't say church is because the church is universal. Okay. So, um, when I say assembly, I'm talking about your congregation. Maybe your gift is not for your congregation. Maybe your gift is for the wider church. Maybe your gift is for believers outside of the four walls of your church, your assembly. Okay. And though it might not operate in the same way, it will always be under the same influence. And that is the Holy Ghost. Your gift will ultimately be able to be confirmed by those that are around. Okay. And this is one of the reasons why I love that the Holy Spirit bears witness because if an individual is standing up and prophesying and it's not of God, then your spirit should be able to pick that up and identify and shut that down and say that was not of God. And that's what the spirit of discernment does. It picks up spirits that are contrary and it picks up that which is right, that which is wrong. Okay, so your, your gift will be able to be confirmed by those that are around you. And that's because they have benefited from that gifting. That's because they have felt the power of God through that gifting. You may not necessarily realize it, but sometimes people will be able to confirm that because of the fact that they have felt you felt felt God move through you in that particular moment. In order to figure out what your gifting is, you will need to pray fast and seek God for an understanding of what he's called you to do and I know that that is a cliche statement that is something that everybody says all the time but I cannot stress how much of an importance it is for you to pray fast and seek God so that you can understand where he has positioned you in the body of Christ especially in this last day okay 
your gifting is important your gifting is essential your gifting is necessary and it's important that you understand where god has positioned you it is very important because then you begin to operate in the role that god has called you to you will find that there will be moments where your gift begins to operate in the most necessary moments the most necessary moments so the beauty of it is that your gift will make room for you the bible actually tells you your gift will make room for you so in the most necessary moments your gift will open up doors for you to be able to operate full-fledged in your ministry for you to be able to operate fully in your gifting and the door will be open and the most necessary moments will come along that's the beauty of it is that when your gift is when you are gifted and when God has gifted you the doors will open themselves you don't have to beg anybody you don't have to ask anybody for a platform those gifts that God has placed inside of you when God reveals that to you and when you see it and you begin to you begin to allow the Holy Spirit to teach you how to operate and you begin to be led by the Spirit um, you then begin to see the doors open and you begin to see the opportunities and the platforms that will be available to you for you to be able to minister um, in your gifting. And finally, ultimately, the most important thing, your gift is to glorify God. Yes, the people will be blessed. Yes, the people will tell you how happy they are, how blessed they were, how much of a blessing you are, how much of a great individual you are. And yes, that's great. But all glory must go back to God. All glory belongs to God. God is the giver of all good gifts. And after you have ministered, after God has used you, every every bit of praise, every bit of honor, every bit of glory must go back to God. He's the one that gave us the gift. He's the one that gave us the ability to be able to move under that particular unction of the Holy Spirit. He's been get, He's the one that allows us and gives us that ability. So all glory must go back to him because he is the one that gave it in the first place. I want to say thank you to you guys for spending some time with me. On your Friday evening, I hope you were blessed and that you pick something up from this this series. Um, on behalf of our national youth team, I want to say a big thank you to all of you that watched, those of you that liked, that shared, that commented. Um, we're, we're we're so glad that you were able to join us on this month's um, journey of looking at the Holy Ghost. And I want to say on behalf of myself and Sister Renee. We want to thank you for taking time to listen, for taking time to uh, to hear what we had to say. Um, you didn't have to click on the videos at all, and we do appreciate you. We really do appreciate you. Thank you so much for your attentiveness and taking time to listen. Uh, we, we only pray that God will bless you, and that while we were talking about this gift, that somebody that has heard the word that has come from this series will receive the outpouring and the infilling of the Holy Ghost um, and that they will be able to move in their full-fledged anointing, that they will move in the, the gifting and the area that God has called them to, that they will be a beneficial, uh, beneficial part of the body of Christ. And so we, we're praying for you. Um, we've got you on our minds and we thank you again. We can't thank you enough for taking time out to, to, to view our videos and to go through this series with us. It's a shame that it's finishing, but we're glad that you guys were able to join us on this journey. And we pray that you were blessed. We pray that you guys have received some understanding, some knowledge, um, and that you have been blessed. That's, that's all we can pray, that you have been blessed um but yes guys if you do have any questions or anything that you want to say or any even if it's a prayer request send it through to me i'm not a pro there's not a problem uh and if you want it to remain anonymous you can remain anonymous um but yeah if you've got any questions or any kind of uh prayer requests please do send them through we'd love to be able to pray with you um for any kind of needs or issues that you may have um i do believe that god is a prayer answering god 
and that he will do exactly what he promised and that is to answer when we pray um and what i would also advise our presiding bishop bishop dexter edmund he tells um, us sometimes to take a spiritual gift assessment um it is actually quite good because you actually get to see um what lineage you potentially might be going down um so definitely i would advise take a spiritual gift assessment um get your church group to take a spiritual gift assessment and see what the different answers are that come up in it and the beauty of it is you'll see the differences in your answers um so i would definitely advise that you do something like that speak to your youth team speak to your youth leader and and take a spiritual gift assessment but guys god bless you i pray that you have a blessed rest of your week and that you are uh, that you enjoy the gift that god has given to us that is the gift of the holy ghost god bless you guys take care